If we had an earthquake and everybody died, you know, I'd stand there and be clapping on top of the earthquake going, da 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 Grieving is a necessary love affair. That's I teach it, that we don't die. So we don't suffer. But we suffer the losing of the loving and the return of the loving. See, what we miss when people go is, who will I have love me? Mom, now that you're dead, who will love me like you love me? Dad, now that you're dead, who will love me like you love me? My wife, who will love me like you love me? Even when we get divorced, who will love me like you love me? And we still grieve it. And you know what really is the grievous thing? That they can finally get along without us. Now, we don't want them to. I have people in the movement whose job is to die and whose job I have to see that they go to the place we've got for them. So they don't have, feel like they want to be pulled back to the earth by incompletions. So they don't get earthbound. Because you're getting close to God at two important points in your life, at birth and at death. They just come in from God with the message of life, and they're going to God with the message of eternal life. It may be because I'm the only person I know that when they close their eyes here, and they open their eyes there, I'll be the same. And they'll know that. Up to that point, I have no promise. But when I say, I will take you there, I do that. You won't know if that's true until you get there. And I don't say believe it. I say, do your spiritual exercises and find out early. <laughs>